Well, we're so glad to be together to worship in this place. Why don't you stand up? And we've got a new song for you, so please join us as soon as you're able.
Father, not only in this moment, but throughout the next moments that carry us to the next time that we can meet together, Father. We don't only want our voices to lift you high, but we want everything that we do, every action that we take, glorify and magnify you in our homes, in our workplace. God, everywhere we go, that's our desire. So fill us in these next moments so that we can take your Holy Spirit with us as you lead us and guide us in our lives. In your precious name we pray. Amen. You can go ahead and take a seat. Hey, Christ community, how you doing? Good? Awesome to see you guys who are here in the room. Those of you who are with us online, we're really glad that you're part of this worship service. Thanks for being here. My name is Daryl Holden, if we haven't met yet, and I'm um, really glad to see you, meet you. Uh, if you are newer here, we would love the opportunity to meet you, get to know you a little bit. Um, for those of you who are in the room, there's a couple ways you could do that. You could scan the QR code there on the seat back in front of you. That'll take you to our digital connect card, or you can stop by the welcome desk on your way out, and uh, we'll trade you your information for a coffee mug full of really good chocolate. And um, purpose of all that really is we'd like to meet you, see if there's any questions we could answer for you, how we could pray for you, help you, serve you. That's what that's all about. Those of you who are online, click the digital connect card and that will take you to our connect page. And we'd love to meet you that way as well. So you're here and you've dropped in. Like if you were here last week, you were here for the launch of this series. But if you're here this week, you dropped into week two of this series. This series that we're calling Seeds, and we're talking here in this second month of the year about seeds that God might want to plant in your life for you to nurture, and so he can grow that and it can bear fruit in you. Last weekend, we talked about the seed of faith and how God plants a seed of faith in our lives, and, and we nurture it, and one of the little questions that we decided we should be asking ourselves is, what if he does? Like, what if God actually comes through on the promises that he makes for us, not the, not the safe question of safety for ourselves, of what if he doesn't, what's my plan B, how am I gonna protect myself or, or get myself through this, but instead, what if he does? What if God actually comes through on the promises that he's made for me? How could I live in response to those promises? So that was the seed of faith. This week, I'm gonna talk to you about the seed of hope. And these two seeds, seed of faith and seed of hope, they grow, they grow closely together. You know, in, in nature, there are some plants that can't, coexist and there are some plants that grow really nicely together and, and faith and hope are two seeds that they really grow closely together because seed of hope is really about prayer and the seed of faith, one of the main ways that faith expresses itself in our lives is through prayer. So really this weekend what I'd like us to talk about is I'd like us to talk about prayer so that we can experience hope in our lives. So at the front end, as so we're talking about prayer, it's really important you have to, if you don't know this about our church already, you gotta know this. We are a next steps church. And when we talk about prayer, we know that most of us would say, hey, I, that, like, that is not something, it's, it's not where it should be. It, and so as we begin to talk about prayer and we recognize that it's not where it should be in our lives, it's really easy for us to be saying things to ourselves or to listen to lies that come from the outside. We can put a lot of negative energy and end up moving ourselves in directions like hearing things and saying things about ourselves that are not true because of where we haven't gone yet. And we can also begin to ask a bunch of questions about prayer, and there are a lot of questions about prayer, and we can get a lot of energy. So we could, we could spend a lot of energy in our lives. We could spend a lot of energy beating ourselves up or letting our enemy beat us up over where we aren't, or we could spend a lot of like sideways energy asking questions about something that really is learned by doing, and so we're a Next Steps Church. And what that means is that we're just gonna commit together, we're not gonna waste energy on letting ourselves get beat up, we're gonna own where we are, and it's okay to be where we are, and we're gonna go forward from here. We're not gonna go backwards because we're being beat up by somebody else, by our enemy or by ourselves, and we're not gonna go sideways because we have a bunch of questions and we're not gonna lean into something that's a practice. We're gonna take our next steps together. And so I'm really excited for us to be able to talk about this prayer this weekend because if, if we could take some next steps in this, it would make all the difference. 
would make all the difference for you in your personal life. It would make all the difference for you in your family. It would make all the difference for us as a church here in our community and even in our world. Prayer is one of those things where somebody like you, somebody like me, can make a difference wherever we are and whatever we're praying about. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be a great weekend. So here's the verse that really is about this, this seed of hope. It's 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. The Apostle Paul is writing this letter under the inspiration of God the Holy Spirit. He's writing it to this young pastor named Timothy, but he's writing it to people like you and me as well. And this letter, the whole purpose of this letter in 1 Timothy was so that people would know how they're supposed to conduct themselves in the church. And so how Christian people are supposed to live, how Christian people are supposed to behave. So he writes some introductory stuff in chapter one, and in chapter two, he really begins to get to the heart of what he wants to say. And the Apostle Paul writes this, he says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, thanksgivings be made for all people. And he goes on to write who those people might be and talk a little more about that. But what I want us to dial in on for ourselves is, is that little phrase there, first of all. I urge then that first of all, prayer. And so for people like you and me, prayer, like first of all, if we're gonna experience hope in our lives, first of all, pray. And, and so prayer becomes a first thing for us, which means that it is really woven into the foundation, the fabric of our personal lives. So for, for you and for me, prayer's the first thing. And then for our families, prayer's the first thing. It's foundational. And for our church, prayer is a first thing. And as prayer becomes a first thing for us, it makes all the difference. We bend, we bend towards prayer being a last thing. Right, if we're just honest with ourselves, we've been towards prayer being a last thing. I'm Paul Miller, who wrote one of my favorite books on prayer called The Praying Life. He, he goes to churches, like churches bring him in to conduct prayer seminars. And I read an article this week that, that in his prayer seminars, so this is churches that care enough about prayer to bring in somebody from the outside to teach the seminar. In, in, that, in those seminars, they conduct research, they ask, people questions you know, about where are you in prayer, and they found, he said, about 85% of Christian people don't have much of a prayer life. So if, like, if that's you, if, you, if you'd agree, you're not alone in all that, and, and the beauty is there's some next steps for us, but we do, we bend towards prayer being the last thing. We do stuff like, okay, God, I've made all these plans. Like, I got the plans, you got the blessing. Will you, will you, bring, like, will you bless these plans that I've made? Or, hey, God, would you, wait, I don't have time to talk about this right now. Could, I'm just gonna head off into this. We bend towards prayer being something that we really think we should get to, but we don't really seem to make it into our days. I'm really busy, I need to, I'll get to it later. But there's, again, so much more for us if we're willing to make prayer a first thing in our lives. And so what I wanna do in our time together, I'm moving quick, and you might need to take your camera out and take pictures of these screens, but what I wanna do in our time together is I wanna give you a quick definition of prayer and help us see how this, how this produces hope in our lives. And then I wanna share with you six things that Jesus said about prayer and show you his model that he gave to people who wanted to learn how to pray. So we're gonna cover a lot of ground here in a little bit, and I'm gonna move quickly, but at the end, we are going to be encouraged and equipped to make prayer a first thing in our lives. Okay, so here's, here's a quick definition of prayer. Prayer is talking with my heavenly Father. So let's just bring it into stuff, people like, people like you and me can do this. This is, it's not something that you have to have a seminary degree or 100 years of being a Christian or a long pedigree of grandpa was this and grandma was that and my parents, like this is just, this is for people like you and me Prayer is talking with my heavenly Father. Now, in saying that, we might begin to think that this is something like, that would be, yes, I should. That sounds like it would be really nice. It, I probably, it's something that I need to do, but I don't have, to, I'm gonna get to that, I hope I can get to that later. That's when we just, when we say it's just talking with my heavenly Father, it, it might feel like it's that phone call from a parent that you need to return or from a family member. It might feel like that, but that's, that's not what talking with my heavenly father is. 
What talking with your heavenly father does is it gets the Lord God Almighty involved in your life. While prayer is talking with your heavenly father, what it's doing is inviting your heavenly father who happens to be creator God, Lord of heaven and earth into your life. And he loves to be invited into your life. And as he, as he comes into your life, then things begin to change. And because Lord God Almighty is stepping into your life, when you invite him through prayer, you can have hope. Not like I hope it gets better, but like I have hope because God himself is coming into this situation and things are gonna move. So, so prayer, to that end, prayer is talking with my heavenly father. Let me give you these six things that Jesus said about prayer. All right, we'll go real fast and feel free again to take out your phone and take a picture of these screens. If you're in the room, you guys who are watching online, you do it any way you want to. It's all good. All right, so the first thing that I wanna make sure we realize that Jesus says about prayer. He says that God will be generous with you in response to your prayers. One of the things we talked about last week in the seed of faith is that God is a giver, not a taker. And if you didn't hear that message, I'd encourage you to go back and listen to it. But God is, he's a giver, he's not a taker. And God will be generous with you in response to your prayers. So Matthew chapter seven, this is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and he's talking a little bit about prayer. He says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. And he's, he's not calling us names, he's holding us in comparison to God who is, holy and right and perfect. And and so if we who are not that, if we who are evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And and so we have this, this statement from Jesus that God will be generous with you in response to your prayers. One in that little verse there, one of the little phrases that I love is how much more? How much more? You think about yourself as a grown-up in a kid's life, because not all of us have kids, but we all are grown-ups. We have kids in our lives, and we have opportunities to be generous towards them and respond in love and kindness towards them, and, and we know how to do that. How much more will, will God be generous towards you when you ask him to be generous towards you, and so so Jesus is really clear, God will be generous with you in response to your prayers. Here's the second thing that Jesus says. He says, prayer leads to spiritual victories. Prayer leads to spiritual victories. This, This little statement, it's in Mark, it's also recorded for us in Matthew and I think in Luke. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, which is the place where he was right before he went to the cross. So he is having this, crisis, and he is on his knees, on his face, before his heavenly father, and he is working that out before his heavenly father and with his heavenly father. And he says to his disciples, who because they're following him closely, and, and his hour of testing is also going to be their hour of testing. It's very different and for di- very different purposes, but Jesus knows what's in front of his followers is, is a moment to either succeed or fail spiritually. And in that moment, he teaches them about prayer. He says to them, watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. Spirit's willing, the flesh is weak. And if you're a believer in Jesus, we've all had those moments, right, where, where we want to do what's right inside of us and there's something else inside of us that is that we've been in the battle. And prayer leads to spiritual victories. If you want victory in your life, prayer is the path to that. And so, so if you're a person who's trapped by something, if you've, got, if you've got stuff going on in your life that you can't seem to get out of or get over, if you've, got, if you've got sin that's grabbed a hold of you and holding on to you, you've got one thing that just seems to trip you up or you've got a, this, this kind of stuff is always in the way, that watch and pray piece, that is so important. And prayer leads to spiritual victory. So, so if you're hearing me in this, all right, God will be generous and spiritual victory. <laughs> Generosity of God and victory in my life, that sounds 
Hopefully that sounds awesome to you. So maybe there's a little pushback going on that it's like, okay, so this, is, this has gotta be for people who are different than me. Right? This, maybe this is, for, this is for the people who have it figured out. This is for the people who do it right. This is for the people who have a spiritual pedigree of some kind. This is for people maybe who stand on stages and talk about these kinds of things. This is for people who know their Bible way better than I know my Bible. This is for people who go to church way more. This, this is not that. So let me, sh- let me share with you a couple more things that Jesus said. So, so these are really encouraging to me. Jesus said that prayer is never a performance. So, so if you're thinking about, like, I don't, I don't know how to pray. We're, I get tripped up with words. I don't know what to say. I seem to lose my train of thought. I go, here's Jesus, like he just speaks into that. Prayer's never a performance. It's not a performance for other people, and it is not a performance for God. Remember, prayer's talking with my heavenly Father. It's not a performance. And so we read where Jesus is talking again. He's in the Sermon on the Mount, and he's giving instruction on prayer. And he says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. They, they, were, they were in performance mode, and other people would stop and watch and say, oh, wow, listen to that guy. He knows how to pray. I'll bet his prayers make it all the way up to heaven. Like my prayers don't seem to make it past the ceiling, but his sound like that, like his have gotta go all the way up there. And Jesus says about the people who, like that guy, he's received his reward. He, he's standing on the corner to be seen and heard by other people. And this is, so he was seen and heard by other people. That's, that's all he was after. He's got what he was looking for. And for people like me who stand on stages and pray in front of people, like, this is, we gotta take this to heart because prayer's not a performance. It's never a performance for, it's not a performance for people. It's not a performance for God, which this part for me is really encouraging as well. He says, and when you pray, don't keep on babbling like the pagans. So they were surrounded by people and nations that worshiped false idols and they had temples and and like real idols set up in town squares and on high places, and they would go and they would pray and they would just repeat, say the same things over and over again, and it was, it was this thing, and he would say, don't pray like that, you don't, you don't keep on babbling like pagans. They think they're gonna be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And so in all this, you gotta know, God isn't listening for eloquent people. He isn't listening for people who've figured out how to pray a long time. He's he's not listening to people who will just, like who just are in it for a performance. This is not, prayer is never a performance. It's not a performance for other people. You don't have to worry about what other people are thinking because you're not talking to them. And it's not a performance for God. The reason that people, the reason that we are heard by our Heavenly Father in prayer is not because we've figured out how to speak his language or to convince him to listen to us because we were eloquent in some way. Eloquent in some way. It is because he loves us. Like the reason he listens to people like you and me is because he loves us. It's not because we've figured out how to perform for him in a way that he wants to watch. And so, so if you're wondering, like, this has got to be, these promises about prayer have got to be for somebody else. No, they're not. They're for people like you In me, Jesus says, prayer's never a performance, not for God, not for others. All right, here's the next thing. You will take next steps in prayer only by praying. So some of us gotta hear this. You'll you'll take next steps in prayer only by praying. So Jesus' followers came to him one day, and he was praying, and they saw it. Like, they watched him pray. And I, that would've been awesome to watch. I really wish the Bible was video instead of words, or maybe words and video, because some of these things I would really like to see. So Jesus is praying one day, and and whatever was going on in that moment, and we don't know if it was something awesome and like miraculous, or if it was just Jesus was praying, and they, they saw him in prayer, and it just seemed like he's actually talking with his heavenly Father. But they say, come to him, and they say, Jesus, um, teach us to pray. It's a great request. Teach us to pray. And, and so what Jesus did is he, he started his response. He said to him, hey, okay, so when you pray, 
And then he gave them a model of prayer that we're gonna talk about here in just a minute. But, but when they said, hey, would you teach us to pray? He did not give them a lecture. He did not point them to a book. He did not answer all the apologetic questions that they have about, now how does this work? He didn't do any of that. When, when they said, hey, will you teach us how to pray? He said to them, when you pray. This is when you pray. And, and what people like you and me need to hear in that is, is we learn to pray by praying. If you feel like a rookie, if you feel like an amateur in prayer, and maybe for you, if you're like me, you've been around for a long time on the one hand, but you feel like an amateur. In pr- you feel like a beginner in prayer, and you're not a beginner in being a Christian. That's okay, because the way we learn to pray is by praying, and Jesus gives us permission to start where we are. Just, how do we learn to pray? Well, when you pray, like, pray. We wanna learn to pray, okay, so then pray. So we learn to pray by praying, and this is such good news. For people like us, we don't have to perform, we don't have to figure it out for God to hear us, to be engaged with us, to bring his great power to bear in our lives. We we get to pray, we get to start where we are and go forward from there. It's the next thing that Jesus said. He said, "Um, don't let a delay discourage you. Keep praying. Don't let a delay discourage you, keep praying. In Luke's gospel, he records for us this story, the parable. The parable is a, a story with a spiritual truth tied to it. And often, the parables are really hard to figure out what the spiritual truth is. But I love this one. It's one of my favorites because Luke, when writing it down, he said Jesus told them a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So I don't even have to share the story with you guys because the point of the parable is that we should pray and not give up. And and often in our prayers, there is a delay. There's a delay, and don't let a delay discourage you. God does not function on your time schedule. He doesn't function on my time schedule. And we've heard people say, you've probably heard it's kind of cliche in Christian circles, it's true, God's never early, but he's never late. And I wish he'd be early. You know, like I wish he would show up right when I ask him. I wish this was one of those kinds of things where like, I could just call and he would do what I ask in the moment, except... When I've, when I've gotten this right in my life, one of the things that I have learned is my prayers change. So, so when, when I don't let a delay discourage me, when I feel like I'm praying to the ceiling, when I feel like nobody's listening, when I feel like nothing's happening. If you've ever tried to pray for very long in your life, we've all had that same experience. So when, when I feel like God's not listening, God's not answering, God's not paying attention, he's not doing anything, but if I'll stay in front of him, one of the things that I've seen in my life is that my, what I'm asking God for, what I'm asking him to do, oftentimes that will actually change. It started here and it's moved over time over here as I have prayed and listened and stayed in front of the Lord about a particular thing what I'm asking him to do and who I'm asking him to be in those circumstances, often that changes. And then the other thing that I've noticed in that, again, there's something about just staying in front of the Lord that, that brings transformation. I, I may not be able to point to anything in the circumstances that I have been praying about that has, that has moved in a way that I could see, but I could tell you that I'm different because, and, and better, like transformed by God because I stayed in front of him and, and continued to stay in front of him about this thing. And it is so easy. It is so easy when it feels like you're praying about something and you've prayed about it for a few days or you've prayed about it for a few weeks or a few months or a few years on some things and nothing's happened. It's so easy to just kind of say, okay, I give up, I give up on this prayer thing, I give up on praying about this thing, I give up. And Jesus was really clear with people. Don't don't let a delay discourage you, I want you to keep praying. He told them that little parable so that they would always pray and not give up. So don't give up in prayer, don't let the delay discourage you. And then this last thing, this is the sixth thing. 
you're not gonna understand everything. So if you're a thinky researcher, gotta know it, gotta understand it, gotta lean into it, like this, hear me on this. Now hear Jesus on this. You're not gonna understand everything. And don't let that trip you up. Don't let that trip you up. There, there are so many questions about prayer. There are individual questions that we have about prayer. There are books that are written to address questions about prayer. Um, we've all read articles. We've had our questions about prayer and about how does it work with God being over and above everything and he knows how it's all going and we pray and things. Like there are all kinds of questions that we have about prayer, but you're not gonna understand everything and don't let that trip you up. So in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus is, this is actually, this is actually not Jesus teaching on prayer. This is like officially like under a sermon that we just said, hey, that's a sermon about prayer. This is Jesus talking to some people about a guy whose prayer was not being answered in the way he thought it should be answered. He, the way things were turning out made no sense to him. So Jesus, John the Baptist, was he was the one who was announcing to to the people, to the world, that Jesus is the Son of God, God the Son. He's come, he is, he is our Messiah, he's God's Messiah. He has come to rescue us and not necessarily rescue us from the Romans who were in charge at that time and over the Jewish nation, but to rescue us from our sins. And so John the Baptist was coming and he was declaring who Jesus is and he, and he twisted off some really powerful people and and he was thrown in jail. And so here he is as the guy who is coming before the king, like the heavenly king, the king of kings. He's the forerunner of the heavenly king, God's Messiah, and he is wasting away in King Herod's jail. And, and so he sent some, some of his followers to Jesus and his question for Jesus was, hey, are you, are you the Messiah? Are you the guy? Because I'm the forerunner. So like I'm, I'm running ahead of you and I'm supposed to run into the gates of your kingdom as we, like, this is supposed to be awesome. And I'm in jail and I've been here and I have been here and I am still here. Are you the guy? And so Jesus answers the question of those guys that John sent to ask, and he just, he said, go tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, dead or raised, like all the things that the prophet said Messiah would do, go tell him, and it feels kind of cryptic to you and to me, but basically it was Jesus' way of saying, yeah, I'm the guy. And as those guys walked back to give John the message, Jesus looked at the crowd, his disciples, who just heard that conversation, and what he said to him, he says, he says, blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. So, so there's always questions. There's always questions, and, and the questions can be big about, and they can be philosophical, and they can be really personal about, this hurts so bad, and you seem to be silent. You, it, and we're not gonna understand everything. But don't let that trip you up. There's blessing for people who do not stumble on account of Jesus, on account of his way and his time in answering our prayers. So you're not gonna understand everything. Don't let that trip you up. You do not have to know all the right words. You do not have to say all the right things. You do not have to have all the questions answered in order to be able to engage with God in prayer and be able to have him engage with you in your lives. So let me wrap all this up and walk you quickly through this model prayer that Jesus gave. It's recorded in the Sermon on the Mount. It's recorded in Luke. That's in Matthew. The Sermon on the Mount's in Matthew. Luke has what's called the Sermon on the Plains. It's recorded in the Sermon on the Plains as well. Jesus gave this little teaching several different times. And so he, he starts with when you pray, remember what you're gonna learn, if you're gonna grow in prayer, you have to pray. So just take pictures of this because I'm gonna ask you to put this into practice this week. So starts, he says, when you pray, our Father in heaven. Of all the things that you and I could be told to, to address God, 
Lord God Almighty, you start thinking of the list of the names and the titles in God, what Jesus gives, Jesus gives us permission to call God our Father, our Father. And so there's this, this intimacy there with our Father in heaven, and if you have dad baggage, and we all have some, but if you have dad baggage, this could feel really uncomfortable, but can I tell you, he is, he is your Father. All those places where your father, your earthly father fell short, he does not fall short. He excels. And all those places where your earthly dad did well, he was a shadow of the son of your heavenly father, like shining through your dad. This is, this is an amazing thing that we have the intimacy, our father in heaven. And there's authority because he is over and above all the stuff that's going on in your life, my life, our world, our father in heaven and he is not limited by the number of problems that people have or by how big this thing is and how small this thing is in my life. When you pray, our Father in heaven. And then the next little piece of this prayer is, is honor for God. I honor you because. I've given you a list there of things and I'll tell you, this has been, like this week leading into this weekend, this has been the form I've been following for my prayers. So just, I'm living it out a week ahead of you every day this week, and so working through this, I honor you because the first thing I put up there is God calls himself the Lord, and he makes himself known as the Lord. And, and in that, if you're reading through your English Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, it's Lord, but it's in all capital letters. That's the name that God made himself known first to Moses and then to the ancient people of Israel, and what it says about God is that he is personal. He is He's a personal God. He's not, he's not some God who's far away. He's personal, he's up close, he's present. He calls himself, I am. I'm here, I'm in this moment. I exist and I'm, I'm right here. He's personal and he's a promise-making, promise-keeping God. All those things wrapped up in that one little statement there. So I honor you because you are Lord. I honor you almighty. You are all-powerful God. You are over and above Anything that I might need to talk to you about in these next few minutes, you've got the power to solve. You are a healer. You're, and God says that about himself. He's the healer. He says of himself over and over again, he's holy, that God is love. So these are some things, these are some starters for you to honor God as you think about who he is and what he said about himself. Father in heaven, I honor you because, that's a little line, hallowed be your name. Then this next thing, your kingdom come. Oh, forgot. Get through that first couple things. Stop and listen. Right, stop and listen. Because, because, prayer is talking with. Prayer is talking with. And, and if you're telling God what, what you honor about him, he might like push on one of those things and say, you need to remember this one. Right? Or, or hey, here's something else that's true about me. You're just gonna, you're gonna feel it in your heart, know it in your spirit. It's gonna be true from the pages of scripture. You need to know this is true about me too because this is a conversation and God knows where your conversation's going. And so stop and listen. Give him a little bit of time to say something to you, all right? So, so Father in heaven, I honor you because stop and listen. And then this next little line that Jesus gave us in this model, your kingdom come. He's, we don't live, like this, this world is not my home. And that's a really good thing to remember that this world, like this culture that we live in that so impacts our everyday life, this is, this is not my home. It feels like home sometimes. And I act like I belong here sometimes, but this world is not my home. God, you're, you're a king and you have a kingdom and your kingdom come. And, and just a reminder for me that this world is not my home and may your priorities and your values that's, that's really about God's kingdom. There's like culture has priorities and values and I have some too, but God, may your priorities and your values, you're the king, so may your priorities and your values take root in my life, in our church, in our family, the community. Your priorities and values take root and then you can move into in this, in, in God's kingdom, there's nobody who's sick. There's no broken relationships. There's none of the messes that you and I experience in our lives, and it's fair to ask God to bring his kingdom, his priorities, his values into the lives of the people that you care about and that you're in it with. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're talking now about, first part of that is about my obedience. 
in my obedience. And, and again, my obedience, not just, Lord, help me do better, but I want to experience victory. Your will be done in, in me and through me so that I get to live out your kingdom values and your kingdom priorities. So, so not just I'm less messy or it's less difficult for me, but I want to experience victory in my life. So your kingdom come, your will be done. And then this other piece, justice. We live in a world that is full of injustice. And hopefully we're more and more aware of the injustice in the world who is around in the world around us and how the strong oppress the weak and it continues over and over again. And in our culture, we just shift who's getting oppressed. But what God does when God brings his kingdom and his will to bear justice, what is right is actually done. And so to pray that his kingdom would come and his will would be done. And hopefully you have a spot in your life where you look at a particular injustice that you're aware of. And, and like you can dial in on that injustice and ask God to bring his justice, his kingdom, his will to bear in that particular area. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then give us today our daily bread. I am busting through the pause to listen. Y'all gotta stop and listen. I have a clock in front of me, it tells me I'm over my time, so I'm trying to hustle. Stop and listen, stop and listen, because he might tell you some things about what it would look like in your life for, for his priorities and his values, where maybe you're really doing well, and he just wants to affirm you and say, hey, well done. Or maybe another area where like, hey, this, this cause, you don't have a cause, this cause. This is injustice, and this is a place where I want you to pray and maybe someday to bring who you are to bear in that situation. He might say some things to you in that, so pause to listen. Your will be done, your kingdom come, your will be done. All right, now, moving into provision. Give us our daily bread. First of all, I'm grateful, Lord, for your provision. So when Jesus gave this model, this prayer looks a lot different in our culture than it does in most cultures in the world. Most of us have daily bread. You, you already got it. You've got tomorrow's bread in your cupboard today. And, and so to be grateful for that and to recognize that we live in this really unique space in time and geography, that, that we, have, we have tomorrow's bread today. And many of us have more than tomorrow's bread today. And so to be grateful for that, because it's a gift that comes from God. And so just to be grateful there. And then for the things that you know that you need. Going into today, provision, daily bread is not just about your physical provision. It is about emotional, spiritual, relational strength, stuff that you need. Forgive us as we forgive others. And Jesus ties forgiveness, our forgiveness, to our willingness to forgive others. So this is the little... Thing that I've kind of had out in front of me, I need your forgiveness for. And, and you know what your stuff is, and I know what my stuff is, and, and you're gonna listen at the end of this little section again, and God will point at some things if you are missing it. He's gracious to us in that way, so I need forgiveness for, and then I'm granting forgiveness to. So oddest thing for me this week, there have been a couple of names from a long time ago that have come back up in the listening time of my prayer. So evidently, I have not forgiven these people like the Lord wants me to forgive them. So this is, this is uncomfortable, maybe, work. <laughs> but, but it's the names that the Lord put in front of me when I said I'm granting forgiveness to. And so there's some deep work that can happen in this. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I need guidance in, I need guidance for. And as you, seek, as you seek the Lord's guidance again, this is a great spot just to pause and to listen to him. Because your heavenly father loves you. And he wants to engage with you. And he wants you to invite him into your life and into the circumstances of your life. And he wants you to listen so that he, like, he could speak into that. And as, as you listen and when he speaks, take what he says very seriously 
And then we get to move forward in prayer and in victory and in living out the generosity of God. So here's, here's my ask of you. Here's my challenge for you. Here's, my, here's what I think, here's what I hope you'll do with this. So for a minimum of four days in this coming week, minimum of four days, because anything less than four days just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference in our lives. So four days, a minimum of four days, take 10 minutes, first thing. Now, like first thing, you gotta get out of bed, and if you're like me, you also have to pour a cup of coffee. But first thing, right, so, so get up earlier. First thing, take 10 minutes and take this little model. Take this little model, and I can promise you, because I've been doing this, I can promise you, if you'll, You'll spend 10 minutes if you'll take that whole model. If you're brand new to this stuff, you'll, you'll spend 10 minutes taking that whole model prayer and those little bullet points I gave you. Take 10 minutes and talk with your heavenly father and, and begin to make prayer a first thing in your life so that you could live with hope. All right, I'm gonna pray that for you. And as I pray, the worship team's gonna come back out here and we're gonna... We're gonna finish our time together with this song, and this song is here for you to be a person who just commits, I'm gonna take my next steps in prayer. No, no backwards energy, no sideways energy, next steps in prayer, 10 minutes a day for this, four days at the minimum this next week, and let's just see where God takes us in our own lives, our life as a church, all right? So you guys bow your head and close your eyes with me. Heavenly Father, we're really grateful that you see us, you hear us, you know us, you care about us, you wanna engage with us, that you're generous towards us, that, that you will move in response to our prayers, that, that you are not a God who is just far away and we have no access to and we just shrug our shoulders and keep going about our lives, that you are a God who, who is up close and personal, you are ever present and you are a promise maker and you are a promise keeper. And so we're gonna believe that those who come to you, you reward us when we earnestly seek you. So, so prayer becomes a first thing for us. We're gonna seek you in prayer. So I pray for myself, I pray for my friends who are here paying attention to this service. We, there are a million things that are gonna come up this week that will keep us from, from 10 minutes, four times. Give us Give us the confidence that, that you'll be over all that other stuff and we can give that time and that energy to you. Call us to pray, please. And may we see reward and fruit in some of this right away. Just encourage us to continue taking steps. And so Jesus, all this good stuff comes to us through you and we're really grateful. So we pray these things in your name, amen.
Friends, have a seat. Thank you, band. Thank you, Daryl, for a timely message for all of us and a good challenge. My name is Ezra, and I want to encourage you, and I want to equip you to, this week, do the 10 minutes, four days, and then carry that on week after week for this year. So we have a couple things for you. Uh, if you need help like I do, reminders are good, and so we want to offer you a weekly text message. If you haven't opted into this yet, go ahead and take out your phone, your camera. There's a QR code in front of you. If you hover it over that, you'll see a yellow box. Click on that. It takes you to our, uh, our action page here for our church, and the seeds bar is what you want to go to. We will give you a, if you opt into that, we will give you a text message every week about Monday afternoon and, uh, and remind you to nurture the seed that God might be planting in your heart. Uh, just to help you out with your prayer life. It, you can opt in for last week's message, uh, the, the seed of faith, what if he does? You can opt into the next two weeks. Uh, but we encourage you to do that so that we can help you in your journey growing with Christ this week and this year. And the second thing that we want to offer you as encouragement is a gift. It's a, it's a little bag like this. Uh, and on your way out tonight, today, uh, you can see the welcome desk on the right side of the lobby, and on the left side, there's a desk opposite of it. There's a basket. It has these things in it. There's a bracelet. There is a, there's a sticker. There's a magnet. And those things you can put on your coffee pot for the morning to remind you. You can put it on your refrigerator, wherever it can remind you uh, to nurture the seed of prayer in your life. We want to give that to you so that you can uh, grow in that. So we want to give you encouragement. We want to give you a gift, and we want to give you our love. We love you, and have a great, great weekend. You are dismissed.